Hello and welcome back. Today we will be continuing our Victoria 3 tutorial series and this episode we'll be talking about five things that newer players get wrong about economics. I just want to emphasize that this is a sort of list of things that are not intuitive, not necessarily the five most important things to know. An example of what I'm talking about is construction is probably the most important thing to emphasize and be aware of, but I think uh, someone who plays a lot of other strategy games will be able to very quickly identify that construction is important to Victoria 3 because you're primary point of interaction is uh, building more buildings and so if you can build more buildings and then you can expand your economy more and you can think of construction as your GDP growth rate and GDP is an extremely important number and so I think that this is something that's easy and quick to identify and the five things we're going to be talking about are going to be things that are a lot harder to identify or will be counterintuitive uh, specifically in the realm of economics. So the first thing we're going to talk about is probably what newer players first look at when they're trying to figure out okay what's going on here economically and that is the balance sheet um, you know conventional wisdom would indicate you want a positive balance and you also want to maximize revenue while minimizing expenses uh, and this is not the case in Victoria 3 in fact sometimes you or very often if you are a major or great power you actually want to have a negative balance and you want to be uh, taking loans running a huge line of credit um, and also you do not necessarily even always want to maximize national revenue revenue. Now, there are two better things to look at or two things you need to look at in uh together along with the balance and that is your construction rate which you can think of as your GDP growth rate and your GDP itself and so coming back to this um, balance figure uh, instead it's important to think of it not hey we're just trying to maximize how much money we're making and minimize how much money we're losing but look at it from the perspective of you are taking money from the economy every time you extract anything in terms of revenue with the exception of tariffs you are extracting money from your own economy so that money is not going into the being paid for for goods it's just sitting there into your gold reserves so for what I mean by this is uh, if more money was into the economy if we were taxing people less they would buy more clothes for example and this would increase the profitability of our textile mills and this increased profitability because there's an increase in price of clothes would drive up GDP so when we take a bigger tax rate or we tax anything um, we are driving down GDP in a sense because we are taking money out of the economy similarly when you spend extra you stimulate the economy and you raise GDP and also you you can think of you know construction as your GDP growth rate so coming back to kind of thinking about uh, national revenue a healthier way to think about it it's still a very important thing your balance is still important to pay attention to but it's not the be-all end-all and instead you should think of it uh, do I want to be extracting money from my economy right now or do I want to be injecting money into the economy and if you want to be injecting money into the economy you actually want to run a negative balance if you are recognized um, the reason why you do not want to run one run one if you are not recognized is is because uh, the interest rates are really prohibitive as unrecognized powers or particularly smaller powers but you definitely don't want to have an enormous gold reserve most of the time unless you are preparing an action where you know you are going to run a deep deep deficit and you want to avoid default um, also you want to avoid going into negative if you are unrecognized because the interest rate is not going to be sustainable and it will crush you but other than that balance is not necessarily something you even want positive often you want it negative which is not intuitive uh, you know for the beginner player to add on to this balance discussion it's important to briefly cover taxes whenever you are increasing taxes you are going to be you know increasing the amount of money you're extracting from the economy which will depress the economy but the way you want to think about it is I want to inject money into the economy in a particular way and I want to extract money from the economy in a particular way and so this is how you want to think about managing this it's not about maximizing your revenue and minimizing your expenses is by having targeted revenue and targeted expenses without going into too much detail uh, you generally would prefer to extract money from the upper strata and so one way you could do that is if you are specifically taxing stuff that they are consuming a lot of like services and luxury items you can target uh, the extraction on the upper strata and you could do this for example with con 
consumption taxes. And then bringing up the, uh, the taxes from the consumption, you can gain more revenue. Now, you don't want to be running a huge positive balance, but one way you can inject money back in is by uh, advancing your construction and by blowing out construction really, really large. And so what will often be the strategy early on will be to maximize taxes, specifically focusing them as much on the higher strata as possible and look to just send construction into the stratosphere. And so this is kind of the the balance is important but it's more important to think of uh not this raw score of balance but how you are you know injecting money or extracting money from the economy uh specifically increasing the investment pool is particularly strong in the early game which the early game is much much longer if you are a newer player and you can't get over like 1.2 billion gdp the next two mistakes that newer players tend to make both have to do with ownership of a building. Now, ownership is particularly important uh, because it affects the investment pool transfer. Whenever a building has a positive balance, a certain percentage of that will be contributed to the investment pool ba uh, the investment pool in reinvestment. Now, different pop types will contribute different amounts to that investment pool. In particular, shopkeepers and farmers will contribute 5% of their income. Aristocrats will contribute 10% of their income, and capitalists will contribute 20% of the income. This is important because it means that you generally want to have a lot of capitalists. And so one of the major mistakes that a lot of players make that are newer is they actually build a lot of agriculture. And in the early game, um, you know, once you get later, agriculture becomes okay. But in particular, in the older early game, you do not want to build a lot of agriculture because it has a lot of aristocrats, which contribute less to the investment pool, which is a huge source of your income in the early game. Remembering that, you know, we would like to extract money from the upper strata. This is a way of extracting money from the upper strata that targets the upper strata specifically because these are the owners of all the buildings. And so you would rather extract more from them in particular. And so not only is it a good source of income, you in particular want to be extracting a lot from this class. And so you don't want to build any agriculture uh, as a result of this, uh, or you want to avoid it uh, as much as you can. Also, if you are playing on a relatively backward country, um, it is extremely important to, as a result of the ownership, to research the latest technology or any other technology that unlocks a production method like leaded glass, which allows you to switch from being uh, shopkeeper owned to being capitalist owned. So for example, if we bump back to hand so uh, sewn clothes, uh, we will see that the merchant guilds are now shopkeepers. And these only contribute 5% of their uh, dividends or of the weekly balance to the investment pool rather than capitalists, which will contribute 20% to the investment pool. And so the second mistake is uh, building a lot of agriculture, even if it's really profitable, because you will not get as much into the investment pool, even if the buildings are making a lot of money. The third mistake players make is they will, in order to decide what they want to build, is they'll go into the market tab, they'll look in the market, and they will build stuff, uh, the sorts of things that are the most expensive things in their market, and they will uh, not build any of the stuff that's really cheap. And it's important to emphasize this is actually a decent heuristic for deciding what to build. But you have to, on top of this, consider ownership uh, in particular, and you don't always want to build the most expensive good. Um, uh, for example, tobacco here, while it's really expensive, uh, is aristocrat owned and we would prefer not to build tobacco. Um, we would want to build a lot of iron specifically because iron is used in construction and so it'll make construction cheaper. Um, it's a lot to unpack how all, everything's related, but in general, you want to build a lot of stuff related to making construction cheaper in particular in the early game and you do not want to build any agricultural buildings even if it looks really profitable. Another further example of not always wanting to build stuff just because it's profitable is if we look in the market for example and see that luxury clothes are really expensive but re regular clothes are really uh, cheap if we come and look at take a look at textile mills you can reach a certain situation where buildings that have dual outputs like textile mills will have extremely cheap of one thing and extremely expensive of the other such that they actually aren't all that profitable and so you can get an improper signal in when it comes to goods that have dual tracks or dual outputs so for example the groceries or the croissants or the sausages uh, in particular will have there's multiple things coming out of the grocers like liquor and these other sorts of stuff that can help depress the profitability but generally Looking in here, it gives you a good idea of what's going to be profitable, 
um, and it, what would be good to build, but you have to overlay it with like the understanding that ownership is important and dual track, um, you know, uh, buildings is important in particular fine arts almost never worth building even if it's really expensive um, or never in the early game and so it's not the case that you want to just simply build all of these even though usually that's a relatively good heuristic just building what's most expensive it is not always good and you need to consider other things on top of that now, a secondary part of this mistake uh, is the idea that, in the end, what we are aiming for is to have every good be as pr uh, cheap as possible, which uh, is the case in a lot of other games, but is not the case in Victoria 3. And so even though we might be building the stuff that's the most expensive and be pushing the price down, the reason we're building the stuff that's most expensive, like the iron mines, for example, is because these will be very, very profitable. They'll have a really high balance because the good is expensive. We're not building it because we're trying to reduce the price we're building it because the weekly we know that the weekly balance of the building is going to be high it's going to be positive this weekly balance will transfer into investment pool transfer it'll also be able to employ more pops it'll increase to uh, the gdp which is the total output of the goods no if all the goods in your market are cheap none of your buildings will be profitable. And so it is bad to have everything be cheap. And generally speaking, you can achieve everything being cheap if you have really, really low government spending, which is indicates that you need to inject more money into the economy. So the goal is really not to get stuff cheap. Instead, it's to get some goods cheap and other goods you want to keep expensive, which informs the overall trading strategy. Now, we're not going to delve into that too, too deep, but just imagine here, we're taking a look at this textile mill and imagine the price of these are really, really low, right? This means that the balance is equal to the revenue minus the expenses. If we, the price of these is really low, the revenue will go to like basically zero, right? Or let's say it's only 12K. Suddenly this building's not profitable. And so it's not going to increase investment pool transfer, um, you know, or any of these other things. And so profitability is important and profitability is driven by the price of goods being high. And so instead, the way you want to think about it is you want the price of the goods, which you have a higher proportion of your own orders being built. And by that, I mean, you're not importing it. So for example, if we're importing most of our tobacco, we want our tobacco to be as cheap as possible, right? If we're building all of our iron, we actually want our iron to be relatively expensive with some asterisks, uh, right? If we're building all of our groceries, we want those to be expensive because it means the buildings will be more profitable. And so you want to depress the price of goods that are disproportionately, you are disproportionately uh, building less of yourself and you want to increase the price of stuff that you were disproportionately building more of. If we were the only uh, builder of groceries, for example, we would want this price to be sky high because that would make exports of the good extremely profitable. So this sort of brings us to mistake number four, which is trying to extract money from the economy via tariffs. If you think about what we just discussed in terms of pushing prices up and down, uh, whenever we tariff, for example, if we tariff on our import of fabric, knowing that we want to import fabric because it is owned by aristocrats, the buildings that produce fabric, if we tariff this, this means we're going to import less of it, uh, and instead the equilibrium price will be a little bit uh, higher because we are tariffing it, we are making the import less efficient, and so less comes in. What this means is that, first of all, all buildings that use fabric as an input will be less profitable because their inputs are more expensive. But second of all, this means that it will be, because the price is higher, it will make our auto queue uh, be more profitable or more prone to building stuff that, you know, will build out fabric and build fabric itself, which will include the aristocrats, which is, again, not what we want because we want to be capitalist oriented. So when we tariff fabric, we hurt ourselves in two ways, right? Uh, we are making the capitalist owned buildings that use fabric as an input less profitable and we are encouraging the auto queue to build more aristocratic owned buildings um, second of all we might be exported clothes right and uh, generally speaking we want the price of clothes to be high if it is disproportionately overrepresented in our economy in terms of our buildings uh, if we tariff it that means fewer clothes will go out we will skim the tariff right uh, but then the price of these clothes will not be as high so we won't be able to support uh, buildings 
building, you know, as many textile mills before they become unprofitable. And when you really want to build a lot because you're seeking to get throughput, that much is fairly obvious. Um, but this can help us do this. And so tariffs just hurts you on all fronts in regard to how you want to massage the economy. It's not that you just don't want money. It's that you want to get money in a particular way. And this particular way does not involve using tariffs as a primary means. And so you should not, as a new player, chase tariffs. In fact, on almost everything, uh, you know, if you are importing it, uh, you actually want to, you know, let's say we want to import sugar, we're going to put an import route to the Egyptian market, we would actually want to eliminate the import tariff on the sugar, that way we can bring more in. And so if you're extracting tariffs, this is actually generally a bad thing. The only exception is, is if there are certain goods in your market you are trying to protect, um, in particular in the late game, this can become a strategy. But uh, other than that, it's not, even then it's not about extracting money through tariffs, it's about preventing other countries from being able to import your goods although generally protectionism is not a good strategy i want to emphasize that it's kind of just a late game sort of thing we switched to england to talk about the last mistake which is having productivity of your trade routes be the primary thing uh, that is important to you when deciding this is a mistake uh, when deciding what trade routes to make, just looking at productivity and trying to get the most productive trade routes. Now, productivity is important, but the overall strategy of wanting buildings owned by a particular pop type is more important than the productivity itself. And so if we were to take a look at the idea of exporting grain, we could export it at a relatively high productivity or exporting tools, let's say, which would actually have a negative productivity to the Spanish market. It would actually be preferable for us to export the tools and the reason why is because this will affect the types of buildings that can be built in great britain and it will affect the types of buildings that will be built by the automatic queue and still be able to be profitable if we export tools to great britain this uh, or sorry into the spanish market this will be a negative trade route and this wouldn't be the first choice right we would definitely want to go to westphalia first but if we export it to spain uh this would make it so that our uh tooling work workshops would be more profitable, right? And so let's find a tooling workshop here. Our tooling workshops would be more profitable. The weekly balance would be higher. Uh, if we were to export grain, uh, we would experience the same thing in particular with all of our rye farms, except we don't really want our rye farms to be profitable. We would rather our tooling workshops be profitable because the ownership type matters. Uh, it's not that we want our uh, rye workshops to be trash, but we would rather let our pops, uh, let's say, it's a, it's a matter of how you are extracting money. We would rather let our pops, our specifically our poor pops, just consume the grain rather than export it for some productivity, right? We don't want to extract money in that way. That is not the more efficient way of extracting money. Instead, we would rather inject money by not running a productive trade route and getting money from the productivity of the building and the owners of the building paying to us and like this sort of stuff. This is not our preferred way of extracting money. We would rather let our pops eat the grain and we would rather try and extract specifically on the wealthier pops. And so, for example, exporting luxury, uh, you know, furniture and this sort of stuff is super, super okay uh, because we are not concerned as much about keeping the SOL of these pops high but returning to like the overall strategy you want to export all of your or the only things that you are exporting you want to be owned by capitalists as far as importing goes you want to import all the stuff that's owned by aristocrats and also specifically resources can be good to import for a variety of reasons that are beyond the scope of this video uh, but other than that that's your general strategy and this strategy is more important than chasing some productivity you know chasing some tail in the spanish market sorry that's our import trade route our export trade route here it would not be worth it to seek this productivity even though it is productive um you know just on terms of this it will make the trade center make more money it will do these sorts of things uh but this is not a good way to evaluate it it's about thinking of your total holistic strategy of pursuing buildings and ownings of a particular kind and also getting greater specialization because when you export if you're producing a lot of clothes and you export clothes we can build these tool clothing things up higher which we can get more economies of scale bonus from specifically we need to research another tech here in great britain so that's not the best example but it is the idea 
So that was the tutorial on five mistakes that newer players make in regards to economics in Victoria 3, mainly kind of focusing on stuff when they're coming from a different game. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell for obviously notifications about more videos. And other than that, other than that, have a good day.